Hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks for joining us for our climate video for the month of October and also extending out for the rest of the year. And this is brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our partnership with IBM. So let's kick off first of all with the animated map for the very first day of October. And it kind of sets the scene for really what's coming in. The areas to focus on, well, the two colors really. The bright yellow is high pressure. The darker blues and reds down here you see all sort of orangey color depending on your TV screen um, are basically showing low pressure. So high versus low and that's what we're going to be seeing as we go through this month and the driver in the middle of them the windy westerlies that's the typical spring sort of setup. Now the downside with this forecast is that for places like Auckland with the water shortage going on you don't really want to be seeing giant highs like this stuck over the top of you or more of them coming out of Australia but we are going into La Nina we're going to talk about that what it might mean for you and will it mean anything. So let's start off with our first uh, map which is for October 1 and what we do each month is highlight just for the next couple of weeks basically the weather pattern showing you the highs and the lows and where they all are and that helps work out the sort of climate drivers as to whether or not it's going to be drier or warmer that sort of stuff. So as we take a look for the very first of October the boxes in red show high pressure and you can very much see what we just saw on the animated map that the north has a lot of high pressure the south is where you'll see the low pressure. So no real changes there our storm disappearing that we had this week the Antarctic blast that is finally going away and the big high coming through settling things down and bringing for the first weekend of October warmer than average weather into a number of regions so that's the positive news as we kick off the month. As we move through to the first Monday in October there's not a great deal of change from right here at the 1st of October, more high pressure. In fact, look at the size of this one, nearly 1040 hectopascals. It covers a giant area and there are other highs all linking up with it. So not a great deal of rain on the way, but the west coast will get a little bit as will Southland where you're closer to that low pressure down in the Southern Ocean. Okay, another five more days ahead, October 10 now. Again, not a great deal of change. A lot more high pressure coming out. That big high from Australia uh, spreading out a bit further, losing some of its intensity, but connecting sort of the dots, if you like, with other high pressure systems. There is a small low, though, that forms around uh, that weekend. So there could be a wee bit of wet weather coming through. But with all this high pressure up here to the north, it kind of limits how much of that subtropical airflow comes in to really boost the rainfall. So at this stage, it doesn't look like a major rainmaker, but it's worth keeping an eye on. Obviously, in spring, things change, and this is still a wee while out from the day we recorded this. Moving through, now our final map that we've got as far as weather maps are concerned goes out to the 16th of October. Beyond this, you're really getting into a lot of guesswork with where the highs and lows will be, so it's not overly helpful. But what we see here is a low over New Zealand, so the middle of the month, does show a bit of chance that there could be a rainmaker up here in the northern part of New Zealand. There's a lot of high pressure around it. There's a big high uh, out to our east as well. So this low is in a little kind of bubble, if you like, um, well used word this year. And, and that could actually connect maybe with other lows to the north. And there's another one out here over Australia. So a bit of a sign of La Nina perhaps to see this low pressure all up here that's a good sign if we need rain up to the north but whether or not that event is the sort of big cure for the dry going on in Auckland and also the dry that's developing now in surrounding regions um, not quite sure just yet it's too far out to totally lock in. All right let's move along a little bit actually I shouldn't have changed sides of the screen. Um, over here this is the next week of rainfall compared to average, compared to what has been recorded in the first week of October in previous years. And what this shows in the red is that most places are leaning drier than average. Red is drier than average, pink is still drier than average, and white is about where you should be for this time of the year rainfall wise. So there is a fair bit of that red shading around New Zealand. Most places are looking quite dry. And when you look at Australia, they've got a bit of uh, variety actually into the middle portions here where there is a bit of blue showing up. So it's not the best map in the world for bringing rain into northern New Zealand. There'll be rain down here in Fiordland and that will spill over a wee bit into Southland. So let's make sense of that a little bit more. This is the first week of rain coming through for New Zealand accumulated. And what you'll see, and I'll talk you through the colours a little bit because it can get confusing, but up here in the north with the pale blues and light blues, that's here. That's just a couple of millimetres 
if you're lucky, a couple of millimeters in that first week. Down here on the west coast, brighter blues pushing up to 150 or 200 millimeters. So that's why you're seeing Fiordland about average. And over here in Southland, more rain on the way. It could be 60 millimeters or so coming through for you still over the next week. And Stewart Island could even get 100 millimeters. So that's a fair bit of rain spilling over and around from that system. But look, most of the North Island is leaning dry, and so is the eastern side around Canterbury, where you're sort of getting 10 to 15 millimeters, and that's probably a, a fair bit of spillover from that west coast rain, so those further to the east may not get it. Okay, now we're gonna go to two weeks accumulation. So this is week one and week two of October to about the 15th. And again, you're seeing that blue up here in the north showing up, just a few millimeters. So maybe only five millimeters coming in for Auckland in the first half of October. That might change with that low that we just saw around the 14th and 15th, but that's not locked in. And so this map here from GFS out of America, the last one we showed you was ECM out of Europe, to balance it a little bit, no great deal of change here. They're showing northern New Zealand's dry, eastern New Zealand's mostly dry, and the west coast has got a bit of rain coming, um, up around 100 to 150 millimeters, not as much as the GFS maps. And by the way, there is an increase in high pressure coming through for some southern areas as we go into October as well. If you go to ruralweather.co.nz, you can see hourly barometric pressure for your property for the next 10 days. It's a pretty cool system. So you can go on there and you can see the graphs going up and down or just the numbers, depending on which one you prefer to look at. But that's quite helpful, especially down here in the south, if you're trying to work out where we're going. Uh, as far as rainfall and temperatures and all that kind of stuff, the barometric pressure is helpful. All right, so let's take a look now just quickly at the IBM data. Now this is just taking a snapshot of, of all the different models and kind of crunching them in to see the most likely scenario. We often talk about the accuracy and long range stuff. 65% is about as good as you can get. That's the best in the world. So it's not bad, but it's still room for improvement. And New Zealand being in the roaring 40s, our weather is so changeable and our country is so small that it is quite hard to be very accurate more than a couple of weeks out. We struggle even sometimes a few days out, let alone a few months out. But let's show you the best thinking on the planet at the moment as far as rainfall is concerned. So for the month of October, it is looking average down here, maybe even a little bit wetter than average in this corner of New Zealand. Otherwise, most places are dry, um, you know, a little bit drier than normal, certainly in the North Island and further down here along the West Coast. Yes, there is some rain coming through, but as I say, there could be high pressure rolling through later in the month, which then limits what you get. So this is quite interesting to see that most of the country still looks drier than average. But here's the interesting note. For the next three months ahead, October, November, December, the IBM computers are suggesting rainfall will start to lean back above the normal side, which would be very good. Now this color here, the green, is only just a little bit above normal. So even with normal rainfall returning, that's not enough to make up for the deficit in places like Auckland, but it will still be welcome over the next few months ahead. And like I say, we'll talk about La Nina at the very end here. Now to temperatures. So for the next month ahead, no surprises to me at all that we're leaning warmer than average. Even with the Antarctic blast in September, we leaned warmer than average. So this will see most of the country leaning about half a degree or so warmer than it should be, especially down here in southern New Zealand, which is actually pushing up more towards a degree warmer than normal. Northern New Zealand, about half a degree warmer than normal for the month of October. For the next three months, not a great deal of change. It's looking around about half a degree warmer than it should be for this time of the year. Well, for the next few months, October, November, December. And that is also quite normal with La Nina, so that doesn't surprise me. So let's talk about La Nina, and we start off with, it's arrived, we've got it. So this is from the Bureau of Meteorology, BOM, in Australia, who we trust. They're not commercial like NIWA, which is why we put a lot of faith into them. So they are showing La Nina has arrived. Now La Nina is measured at the equator. We're partially in the roaring 40s a long way away. So let's break this down a little more. So it is suggesting we're only just in La Nina by December, st more strongly into it. And then as we head in towards February, it looks as though maybe pulling back again towards neutral. So it may not be the greatest La Nina in the world, it may not be a record breaker either, but it's enough 
to perhaps suggest that north of New Zealand there'll be a few rainmakers around over the next few months. Um, so that's what we're hoping for. And yes, there is a fair bit of hope in this. I mean, long range forecasting, it's an art, it's a science, it's also a bit of guesswork. So uh, especially, in, as I say, in our part of the world, the roaring 40s, very hard uh, with the chaotic patterns that we've got going on. But this is a bit of a help to see this. And it shows that as we go in towards the end of the year, you just see that needle dropping further down into La Nina. But got to balance that by saying it starts to pull back out again next year based on the current scientific thinking. So that is it for us. That's our latest update for you. I hope it's helpful. And uh, also give us feedback too. We're keen to hear the feedback on how we can improve these videos. We've only just sort of been doing them this year and it's a little bit of a new territory for us, but I hope you find them helpful. That is all from me. We will see you again next month with our next climate update.